Oh my gosh, are you looking at that case coming down to that house? Holy cow. See that dark red, that's all heavy wind. I mean, that's like 45 knots. You guys hold on, I'm gonna turn around. So far this year, we've spent 10,000 US dollars on fuel. I estimate that we will probably end up spending $20,000 on fuel. The kids are back on the boat. We're so glad to have them home. And we're here at Hang Loose Beach, which is in the boot of Italy, watching this hydrofoil, hydrofoil kiting competition. We've got two friends competing, Lucy from New Zealand and JJ from Tonga, but it's hard to tell who's who. They all have the same kite and uh, it's not, it's really not a spectator sport, that's for sure. So yesterday we're sitting here on deck watching these races and Keith points out this little sailboat and he's like, when did that boat get here? And so we're all watching it for a few minutes and we realize that it's just floating away. It's floating away. I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. No, we didn't let it float away, but the anchor must have come unstuck. And so Jack and Keith hopped in the dinghy and went over, got the motor started and pulled their anchor up and motored it back to its little spot near the beach. The owner did finally pull up a few minutes later and he's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. He was so grateful. They reset the anchor there, it was fine. I was just really thankful that there were no other boats behind or no rocks or anything like that. He was very lucky. Anyway, I really don't know what this episode is going to be about um, at this point, but we are going to sit here for a few days. We're waiting on a package. Finn left some stuff up in Switzerland, and so Glory had to pack it up and ship it down here. So we should get that in the next few days. And when the kiting competition is over and we get the package, we're headed over to Sardinia, which is still Italy, and then up to Corsica, which is France, and then over to Spain. So that's our plan for the next few weeks. A lot of that coastal cruising up there that we're skipping, um, like Monaco, the coast of Italy, Monaco, the coast of France is all very expensive. And so we're just not interested in spending a lot of money up there. Fuel here is already $8 a gallon. And we're using a lot of fuel, we're running the generator often because we need the air conditioners because it's so hot. There's literally a heat wave in Europe right now. So that's our plan. So stay tuned and um, subscribe if you don't already. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the show. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water surrounded by the blue Basically made only I'll be saved You told yourself the line but I just let it float away Yeah, I'll let it float away So the weather's going to be 106 today, 106 tomorrow, and then it finally cools off down to the 80s again. It is, and there's no breeze, no wind. It's just, it's just hot. Uh, I'm JJ. I've come all the way from Tonga, where I met Zatara. What was it? How long ago was it, Jack? Four, four or five years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Long time ago. And yeah, three years Finn's ago. just been chasing after me ever since. So. How old are you, JJ? 17? 17, yeah. Almost 18, yeah? Yeah, I'm just about to turn 18 in a couple of days, actually. Sweet. And what? how did you place in the competition the other day? Um, 17th in Silver Fleet right now. Out of how many? Uh, there's 45 in Silver Fleet. Cool. So, yeah, quite a few. So, you going to the Olympics? I'd love to go to the Olympics. That'd be lovely. That'd be cool. Yeah.
it's okay. My Keith is changing the oil in one of the generators. Is it nice and cool down there, babe? Oh, it's, it's just crusty. It's like a cold front came through. It was 111 Fahrenheit outside today, y'all. That's crazy. So, tell me some tidbits about changing oil on a generator. No, nothing to tell, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, how often do you do it? And where do you get the oil? I change the oil every every 200, and, 200 hours on these generator, this generator and the other generator. Okay. And I get the oil from wherever, 15W40. The whole boat takes 15W40. Cool. Both generators. Both generators and the main engine, so you don't have to confuse oil. That's good. And, uh, cool. and then, uh, that's all that happens. That's it, huh? That's it. Alrighty then. coming down from France. You can see them coming down through here. Okay. You can see that dark red, that's all heavy wind. I mean, that's like uh, 45 knots, gusts. And so what we did, we were up here at Hang Loose Beach, and we decided to sail down here to, uh, what's the name of this little town? Up uh, P, starts with P, I can't think of it. Tropia. Tropia, yeah. yeah. And we went around the back side here. And uh, this has given us some protection from the, the wind over the next uh, 24 hours. And once the mistrals calm down, tomorrow, Wednesday, today, they're getting in, and then tomorrow they, they're gone, and it's all over. So we just came down here to Pre hide out from the winds for a day. Yeah, for a day, and then we'll go back up here to Jazeria. We're waiting on a package for Finn, and, totally. and then we'll head over here to Sardinia. 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 Okay. How long of a passage is that? Uh, two nights. Two nights from here to there. Okay. There you go. I guess it's so hot and dry. Yeah. Things just line up like yeah. that. Yeah, there's some flames there. Oh, I can see some more be behind me yeah, at the center. They had the fire. It's burning. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Europe's been battling a heat wave for weeks now, with temperatures climbing above 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Scores of wildfires have broken out across Greece and Italy in the past week, stoked by dry conditions and possibly arson, forcing thousands of residents and tourists to evacuate. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, are you looking at that, Kate? Yeah. Whoa. Jeez. That was a big one. I bet that's homes and like Look at that. propane tanks and now. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming down to that house. They've got massive wildfires there. Yeah, I know. Watching the homes burn. Just um, um, my beautiful day watching other people suffer. Boys are getting ready to boil, I guess. Now that our friends have left, we're back to school. Finn is finishing his last semester of high school. Yes, ma'am. Are you happy about that? Back to school. Back to school! Oh, oh my goodness! The hashtag back to school! Because we haven't used that line in a hundred times over okay. and over again. So. Alright, so I just changed the filter. This guy. And I put a new cap in because these are kind of leaking a little. They're getting older on the filter cap. And uh, the negative about this engine is the filter is right here. The good thing about this engine is it's a top load filter, so when I pull the oil filter out, oil doesn't go everywhere, it just stays in there. 
So what I've done is, I, a long time ago, if you remember, I plumbed out of the drain, I took the drain plug out of the oil pan on this engine, and on the other engine, and I ran a hose all the way back to the sugar scoop where it's easy to access. And I put an electric pump on there, so when I want to drain the oil, I just open the valve, flip a switch, and all that oil pumps out of this engine back into a jug, an old oil jug. And then when I want to put the oil back in, I just turn, turn the switch the other way, and it pumps the oil out of the new jug back into the engine. And that's all there is to it. Cool. And that's what you're gonna do. That's what I'm fixing to go do. Cool. <sighs> all right. So this line right here, this line goes back to the oil, the drain plug on the Volvo engine. I installed this bi-directional oil pump right here. I have it plumbed so it'll drain the oil out of my generator over here and my main engine. All I gotta do is open a valve and it goes one way, or open a valve goes the other way. So then I take this little clear hose right here that I'm taking. This is a little 12 volt pump. Is all it is. And I find which can can doesn't have much oil in it. Pretty clever. And that's the oil coming out of the Volvo engine. Taking the oil out piece. Now I just gotta put the oil back in piece. And people wonder where we get rid of our old oil. We normally just take it to a dock and uh, they get rid of it there for us because they're always changing oils on docks and stuff like that. So that's where the old oil jugs go. Okay. Why are you doing that? Just so you don't have to pull that big heavy thing down here? Yeah, yeah. And, and I know what I'm putting in. You want me to hold the funnel up? Just a little bit. Mm. Teamwork. So one of the great things you guys can see while we're down here changing oil is this fuel polishing by KTI Systems. You know, remember we put that in and it's great. It keeps our fuel clean. It's easy to switch when the filter's bad. It's been just a real blessing. We can polish fuel and we transfer fuel from tank to tank because like sometimes when we're on anchor for a long time, we're running the generator on one side, the tank gets low on this side. I can transfer fuel. I can do all kinds of things. There you go. That's all I need. All I need. I want you to go in there and then check the oil level. Hey, stop. It's exactly right. Yeah, it actually is exactly right. Good. Yep. Okay, fires are all put out. Everything is calm now on the mountainside. What's the wind? It's like 14 knots or something? Yeah, it just kind of gusty. But it's not 40 like it was going to be. Oh, it's 40, 30 or 40 out there. Yeah. We're just behind the shadow. Yeah. Side of the rocks. Hi. Oh. <laughs> you alright? The board. Get in this board. <laughs> JJ, why are you wearing a helmet? Because I don't want to hurt my pretty little head. And you might go to the Olympics soon. Hopefully, yeah. Don't yeah, I got my qualifiers in less than a month, and I don't really want to damage yeah. my chances too badly with concussions yeah. and things. Dude, smart. That's pretty good. Whoa. Uh oh. be a little calmer out here but it's not and we're gonna go around the, the winds have died down and it's just the sea state still the sea state's still up there and we're gonna turn and have it on the beam for a minute so we're gonna find out exactly what it's about here in about huh. 10 minutes nice 
Our plan this morning was to duck out of our little safe anchorage and head past Tropea on back to the beach where we have to pick up Finn's packages. But unfortunately, once we rounded the corner, the waves were still really turbulent. So we decided to turn around and try again tomorrow when the sea state is better. So we waited 24 hours and the sea swell has come down out here. It's a lot better than it was. It is a lot better. So we're going to go get some fuel over at Tropia. Then we'll go back to Jazeria, drop off our dear friend JJ so he can go to some more kite foiling competitions. And uh, we're going to head off to Sardin. Well, we're waiting on a package, but once we yeah. get the package, we're headed off to Sardinia. It's a buck ninety a liter. No, what'd you say, Keith? One ninety. A buck ninety five a liter. Lord. So I feel like the last several episodes we've been getting fuel. I know the last episode we got fuel because me and Keith did it on our own. And then it was either right before that or two weeks before that because we were at the marina. They brought the fuel truck out. It seems like we're getting fuel every week and that is becoming very expensive. But we used fuel to run the generators, to run the air conditioners and the water maker. And when we had the med crew on, we used a lot of water. It's an average of $2 a liter, which is like almost eight bucks a gallon. It's crazy. What do you say, Finn? Crazy. Okay, sick girl. Since we're on the subject of fuel, I thought I would share my nifty little spreadsheet with you because I'm an accountant by trade and I keep track of all of our income and expenses for tax purposes. And so every time we fill up, I record it on my handy little spreadsheet. So as you can see, we filled up in just about each country we visited once a month and three times in July. We did a lot more motoring this year because we lost our, our furling motor back in February and so we weren't able to replace that until June. So we couldn't use our head sail for several months. And also in the med, it's kind of tricky. Sailing is because of the island effect. You put a sail up, you go around an island and the wind comes from a different direction or completely dies. Um, so you gotta drop the sail or put a different sail up. And so we motored more than we probably should have. Our cheapest fuel was in Turkey at three or four bucks a gallon, whereas our most expensive was in Israel and here in Italy at $8 a gallon. So far this year, we've spent 10,628 US dollars on fuel with an average price per gallon of $6.35. And most of the times, if you're at a marina, they require you to fill up at the marina. And sometimes the, the price is jacked up like two or three times what it is at the gas station. So there's been a time or two where we've been able to rent a car, take jerry jugs, smuggle some gas onto the boat um, because they just charge you an arm and a leg at these marinas. So since we plan on spending the next several months in the med before crossing to the Canaries and then crossing the Atlantic Ocean, I estimate that we will probably end up spending um, double what we've spent so far. So probably $20,000 on fuel. <laughs> Um, so please let the ads roll on these videos. Thank you very much. Don't hit your head.
tune in next week for a two-day non-stop sail to Sardinia. And thanks so much for watching till the end. Have a great week. <laughs>